I was blessed to be part of, a, of an incredibly small team of colleagues that brought the iPhone to the world. In effect, what we did was we brought the information age to the masses. In the power of the device to draw you in with, a, with those superhuman capabilities, you tend to lose sight of what's immediately around you. And that's an issue. What we're doing at Humane is we are building from the ground up. The next shift in technology is going to be led by AI, ML, and CV. And it's important for us to recognize that, like the impact of the information age, the intelligence age is going to have an equally impactful impact on, on all of society. Welcome to Futurescape. My name is Kirthi Roberts, and I'm the producer of the show, where we discuss innovations, possibilities, and probable realities, seemingly good or bad, of the future today. I've decided to involve my AI voice actor again. That is correct an inanimate entity living on a server who now has a job. We'll get back to that point in another video. So if you've come to love my voice, and I can't blame you for that, then I hope my AI voice actor is a close second, and that you come to enjoy him as well in time. Thank you, Real Curthy, for that kind introduction. I'll take it from here. There were many riveting and inspiring talks at the annual TED conference in Vancouver a few weeks back. In one of my recent videos, I tried to capture the essence of a few TED Talks that showed a spectrum of views in support of or opposition to artificial intelligence and those in the middle among various experts in the field. In this video, I'll be sharing with you another rather riveting TED Talk from the April TED Conference in Vancouver by Imran Chaudhry, who was the Director of Design at Apple for 22 years and someone who played a key role in the design of a range of products at Apple, including the Mac the iPhone and the Apple Watch. His new company, Humane, which he started with his wife, Bethany Bongiorno, also an ex-Apple employee who was the director of software engineering, introduces a paradigm shift in the human-machine interface. Humane is a company focused on designing technology that integrates seamlessly into our lives without the need for screens. He highlights the ubiquity of screens in our modern lives and emphasizes the need for a more natural and intuitive way to interact with technology and introduces a new concept called invisible technology that aims to make computers disappear into the background of our daily lives. The concept of invisible technology or ambient computing is not new and dates back to the late 80s to Mark Weiser, the chief technology officer or CTO of the Silicon Valley based Palo Alto Research Center or PARC. And for those who may not be familiar with PARC, it is arguably one of the most advanced and important research hubs and technology nurseries in the world, which quite literally gave birth to the graphical user interface, the Ethernet and local area network, the personal computer, the mouse, the laser printer, and even object-oriented programming for anyone in the audience working in software development, and many other critical and foundational innovations in hardware and software technologies we take for granted today. The term ambient computing was popularized by Mark Weiser of Park over 30 years ago and ranged from being a buzzword to having limited success as a buzzword across Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon and Facebook over the past decade and further popularized by highly acclaimed tech journalist Walt Mossberg who Imran Chowdhury gives credit to and makes reference to during his TED talk. It has been a far-fetched idea for over three decades However, due to the convergence, significant advancements and timely maturation of just the right combination of technologies such as sensor and semiconductor technology, artificial intelligence, ambient and invisible technology may just be around the corner. Or at least that is what this ex-Apple director of design and director of software engineering duo are betting on. Imran describes Humane's wearable and standalone device and the underlying architecture and platform as being built from the ground up for artificial intelligence and that by design it does not require a smartphone or any other device to pair with it. It interacts with the world just the way we do. It hears what we hear and sees what we see without additional contraptions and gadgets strapped to your face or head while completely fading into the background of your lives thanks to advances in sensors or sensing technologies. On us, similar to our ears, eyes and brain, 
but completely invisible to us. He is trying to introduce us to a paradigm and to a future that is screenless, seamless, and just sensing. Here's him showing how he interfaces with it to find a gift for his wife before leaving the annual TED conference in Vancouver. Where can I find a gift for my wife before I have to leave tomorrow? Vancouver's Granville Island is a lively shopping district. That's an incredibly simple response for a very complex query. How often do we find ourselves in a new city, wrestling with our phones, trying not to bump into people, trying to figure out where we're going and where we're supposed to be? And here, how he gets it to speak French in his own native voice with his unique tone, diction and emotions. Invisible devices should feel so natural to use that you almost forget about their existence. Des appareils invisibles devraient sembler si naturels à utiliser. Vous oubliez presque leur existence. You'll note that's me and my voice speaking fluent French, using an AI speech model that's part of my own AI. This is not a deep fake. In fact, it's deeply profound. This is my AI giving me the ability to speak any language. And you, having a chance to hear me speak that language in my own emotion and my own voice. Thank you. He refers to this as good AI in action where your AI becomes your personalized form of memory and your personalized sensing device, and firmly believes that this will open up entirely new possibilities and ways of experiencing life and your loved ones without having to fiddle with technology or have it get in your way. For instance, since the technology is invisible, you may be able to ride your bicycle through a park while ripping through your emails, or go to a concert without having to hold your phone up to capture it or experience your toddler's first steps without a screen between you and your child. Here's another peek into the future that is not currently possible, but one we're likely to take for granted a few years from now. This one is related to his health. I used to eat a ton of these when I was a kid. Can I eat this? A milky bar contains cocoa butter. Given your intolerance, you may want to avoid it. So I can't eat these anymore. Um, but what's cool is my AI knows what's best for me, but I'm in total control. I'm going to eat it anyway. Enjoy it. <laughs> and this, after having a day filled with back-to-back -back meetings. Imagine this. You've been in meetings all day, and you just want a summary of what you've missed. Catch me up. Patrick is coming to tomorrow's design meeting. Bethany wants to move next week's dinner, and Oliver is asking about soccer this weekend. These are emails, calendar invites, and messages, all surfaced up to the top. You can use these to help guide your decision making manage your workload, and sculpt tailored responses in your own voice and in the context of your life. And we gain this context through machine learning. The more you use our device powered by AI, the more we can help you in all times of need. Your AI effectively becomes an ever-evolving, personalized form of memory, and we think that's amazing. In other words, the case he's making is that in the future, AI will be both ambient and contextual, meaning that it will understand you, your surroundings, and your particular context in order to get you the best results. And as he puts it, Your AI figures out what you need at the speed of thought. There will no doubt be issues of safety and privacy that will need to be addressed. And no, he does not spend a lot of time on this, except for assuring us that safety and privacy are paramount to the design. But it will surely be more challenging. And as technology evolves and becomes virtually invisible, these challenges will scale inversely. 
As humans, we tend to be impatient and we want all unintended and undesirable consequences resolved up front, certainly a reasonable expectation. But unfortunately, I am not aware of any technology that has emerged that has met this requirement up front. And most don't meet it for years or even decades after. And so we tend to whinge and whine, muddle along and somehow adapt and move on. Perhaps this is just part of our unmistakable and undermined resilience as a species that has allowed us to thrive despite all odds, under far from perfect conditions, both from our natural environment or from conditions we create ourselves and are self-inflicted or our own species inflicted. Before we wrap up, however, I'd like to draw attention to something I mentioned in an earlier video. Here's the link for it. Where, with respect to the impact on the future of jobs, I looked at what happened during each major industrial revolution and by highlighting the lump of labor fallacy that similar to the once unimagined jobs of the social media era, new jobs will emerge and be created in completely new frontiers, inconceivable from our current vantage point, despite advances in AI. This video on the next frontier of invisible screens and ambient technologies is clearly one such example. So whether we like it or not, if most of us prefer a future of ambient computing that looks more like this than this, then this Apple designer's vision will likely become a reality. So that's it, folks, for this episode of Futurescape. Thanks for watching. And if you got value, please like and subscribe. And please let me know your thoughts and comments right below. Until next time, be safe and be well.